<clears throat> Turn in your Bible this morning to Revelations, the second chapter. Hallelujah. The book of Revelation, I should say, the second chapter. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel good this morning. My, my, my. I got thinking about, while they were singing, I got thinking about, you know, how sometimes we get excited and how we act. And I, I got thinking about that old game show. I don't even know if it's still on or not. It was called Let's Make a Deal. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And they call in people's names, you know, to come down from the audience. I think I'm not getting my game shows mixed up. And boy, they just have a fit all the yeah. way from their seat all the way down front because they's going to make a deal. Amen. Right. Oh, I made a deal this morning. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And I got the best of the trade. Amen. Hallelujah. He gave me a white and shiny garment for my old tattered rags. Amen. Yeah, Hallelujah. You went for door number one. That's exactly right. <laughs> Amen. My, my, my. So I made a deal. I'm excited about it. Amen. What we've been talking about. We've been talking about commitment. Amen. Come on. And commitment led us to... The problem with most people's commitment, and that's compromise. Yeah. This morning we're going to talk for just a few minutes about the spirit of compromise. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I want to give you again the definition for the word commitment that we talked about last week. The definition for the word commitment is an act of committing to a charge. All right. It is an agreement or a pledge to do something. It is an engagement. It means to, Brother Bill, to assume an obligation. It means something pledged. It means being obligated or emotionally impelled to do something, to a commitment, to a cause. Amen? Yeah. And we found out that some of the synonyms for this word means adhesion. Many words that means the same thing. It means adhesion. Brother Sleece, it means to get stuck to. And I told you last week, we stuck to a lot of things. Amen? But very rarely do you find somebody that's stuck to Him. Amen? Oh, we're addicted to a lot of things, but very rarely do you find us being addicted to Him. Amen? Stuck to Him. My goodness. I told you last week, have you ever heard that, 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 uh, that saying old folks used to use that I can't keep this kid off my skirt tails? Amen? Just wants to hold on to me all the time? Yeah. I wish we had some Christians that was like that about Jesus. Oh, Amen. My. Hallelujah. Didn't want to get separated from Him. Oh. Didn't want to let go of Him. Didn't want to get unstuck from Him. Yeah. So it means to be stuck on. It means adhesion. It means allegiance. Come on. It means to be attached to. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, come on. It means fidelity. Yeah. And most of you in marriage, you know what that they're talking about. Yeah. Amen. It means to be constant. It means dedication. It means to be devoted. Yeah. It means to be full of faith. Uh -huh. It means fastness. It means loyalty. It means steadfast. Yeah. Amen? Come on. And here's some related words. Affection, fondness, determination, firmness, resolution, dependability. Yeah. Church don't know too much about that. You can't hard depend on nobody. Mm -hmm. right. Amen? That's the truth. Dependability. It reminds me not long ago when we had the church at Island, you know, and we was there for a couple of years and they sold the building, we had to move. We were cleaning out the building out back and a brother from up yonder ways came by to pick up some stuff and he said, you know what we ought to do, brother? We ought to open up a church. <coughs> I said, I've been here for two years. Where you been? <laughs> Amen? I'm talking about dependability. People that tells you, hey, if you'll start a Sunday morning service, I'll be there. Yeah. You know how many people I heard say that whenever we didn't have a Sunday morning service? Come on. You know how many people stuck to it? Right there. Brothers least. Several people. Oh, you having Sunday mornings? Well, I just can't get out at nighttime. Are you having Sunday morning service? We're getting ready to. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Ain't seen them. I'm talking about dependability. One girl, seven day Adventist, she said, Are you having Sunday morning service? I said, Yes. She said, Fantastic. Will y'all come by and pick me up? We went by, picked her up, brought her here. She never came back. Oh. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about being able to depend on somebody. Yeah. And not just spiritually. You can't depend on people in the natural anymore either. That's right. You used to be able to take somebody at their word. Other people's word don't mean spit anymore. Oh. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
They, they promise you something just to get you out of their face. Right. Knowing they never intended to keep it in the first place. That's right. True. They'll tell you something to get you to vote for them. Right. Knowing there is no way, they've been in politics long enough to know, there is no way they can keep the promises that they've made to you. That's right. But they'll make them <coughs> so that you'll vote for them. Yes, sir. Talking about being dependable. Come on. Talking about being committed Come on. this morning. Amen? Yes, sir. So those are some related words yeah. that we've been talking about commitment. Now, unfortunately, how many people know what an anonym is? That means the opposite of. I looked up some words that are opposite of commitment, and the church can relate more to these than they can commitment itself. It means disloyalty. It means faithlessness. It means falseness. It means a falsity. It means inconsistency. Uh-oh. It means infidelity. It means treachery. It means unfaithfulness. And if you'll allow me to add this one to it this morning, it means compromise. Amen? Amen. Because now it's no longer, this is it, it's settled, it's steadfast, it's rooted, now it's well. Maybe we can compromise the point a little bit. Amen. Wow. Maybe there's some middle ground that we can meet on. Yeah. And that's exactly what the church has done. The church has allowed the devil to call them down off of the wall, just like he wanted to do with Nehemiah, yeah. and meet, them in, meet him in the plain of Ono, oh, and oh. compromise the calling that God has put upon his church. Come on. And that is to preach the gospel. Right. I'm talking about preachers that used to be fireballs for Jesus. Yeah. Preachers that used to preach the truth of the word of God, but have sold out for a Rolls Royce. That have sold out for a nicer home. Yeah. That have sold out for a nicer place to, nice, nicer place to hold their, bed, their, their meetings and have their business meetings and their business headquarters and all of that. Mm -hmm. Sold out to the devil. Yes, sir. And they never intended to do it. That's right. But listen, if your message is took the focus off of Jesus and put it on prosperity, your message is wrong. Yes, sir. If your message has took the focus off of Jesus and put it on holiness, your message is wrong. Right. Amen. Yeah. Holiness will come if you follow Jesus. Amen. And I'm not this and that. We need to preach it. Amen. We don't have enough preaching of it going on. Right. But in fact, your message instead of Jesus, your message is wrong. Man, come on. Jesus should always be the center of our universe. Yes, sir. The center of our world. The center of our message must always come back to His finished work on the cross of Calvary. But the church is compromised. Even so much to see, they think they can give the devil an inch. Come on. They don't realize that once he gets his foot in the door, Come on. once the enemy gets his foot in your door, yeah. it won't be long till he won't only have his foot in the door, he'll be calling the shots at your place. That's right. Amen. Come on, brother. He'll be saying, you know, you can get us, you, you can get more young people in here if you just don't sing quite as many old hymnals as you sing. Yeah. If you'll sing something a little more contemporary. Right. If you'll put in some strobe lights, yeah. if you'll have more of an atmosphere of a concert right. than an old stuffy church house, amen? Yeah. And you might think, well, you know, that ain't going to hurt anything. And it won't be long to be saying, you know that old Bible you read out of, all those these and thous and yonders and all of that stuff? Yeah. You, if there's some newer versions out there that, that speak to the young people better and they can understand it better. And, and so you begin to get you another version. Amen. And it ain't long to, he says, you know that old cross up there? It, you know, that's just, a, that's, that's offensive to a lot of people. And it's really not, it's just a symbol of pain anyway. Why don't you get that old cross out of there? Why don't you get any religious symbols out of your church? Till finally you don't have a church no more. You have an entertainment hall and you ain't seeing nobody set free. They just going out the same pitiful mess they was when they came in that morning because all you're doing is saying you're okay, I'm okay, I don't want to offend you, you're my brother, I'm your brother, and we'll all get along, amen? Yeah. And it all started with a little compromise. Oh, that's the truth. Amen? Yes, they used to say a brillo cream, a little dab do you? Come on. And he ain't that way with the devil. Right. You give him an inch and he'll take a mile. All right. The spirit of compromise will eat you up. Come on. Amen? Amen? You'll compromise a little and then it won't be long that you'll find out you're compromising a bunch. Amen. We find this happening to a church over there in the book of Ephesus, which we touched on as we closed last week, I think. Yeah. Revelations 2 and 2, the, the church of Ephesus. I know thy works yeah. and thy labor uh -huh. and thy patience 
And how those can not bear them which are evil. And see, Jesus is telling them you've done some good things. Come on. It ain't that you've always been useless to me. They have tried them which say they are apostles and are not. And has found them liars. I'm in Revelation 2 and 2. Come on. And has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Mm -hmm. Now if he stopped right there, they'd have went away thinking, wow, we're pretty good people. He said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Thou hast left thy first love. Thou hast left thy first love. Because of a lack of commitment and compromise, mm -hmm. these people have, have allowed themselves to walk away from the very one that they were working for. And he says, remember therefore, this is how serious the spirit of compromise is. Remember therefore from which thou art fallen, and repent. Yeah. And do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, mm -hmm. and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, yeah. except thou repent. This church had compromised somewhere along the line. Come on. Amen. True. Brother Mike texted me something yesterday as he was on his way to church or getting ready to church for church. He's been preaching up Sister Mary's. He said, and I don't know where the stat came from. I don't know how accurate it is, but I know there's some truth in it. He said that 4% of young people that are raised in church, only 4% of them stay in yeah. church. And I text back to him and I said, yeah, that's in spite of all the efforts that the church has done to conform to the world to keep them. Right. Amen. That's true. They've changed their music. They've changed their Bibles. They've changed the scenery. Right. They've changed the, the way that they conduct things all to reach the young people and it didn't work. Right. They have compromised. True. And the, st the stats have got no better whatsoever. Right. I submit to you today that one of the reasons it ain't getting no better is because of compromise. Amen. Amen. That's true. The world, when they see somebody wishy-washy and don't even know what they believe, they don't want what you got. They're looking for somebody that knows what they believe. Mm. Amen? Man, come on. And not just the nation is compromised whenever we allow them to take prayer out of school. Right. I got news for you. The problem went deeper than that. Right. It went out of homes before it went out of the school. Yeah. Amen? Man, if yeah. we'd have had prayer in homes yeah. like we, what we were supposed to, we wouldn't have got it taken out of school. There'd been enough people that stood up against it. Yeah. But there was enough people that were too busy and they were working and they had decided they'd lost their interest in God. Yeah. So they wasn't worried about the fact that their children couldn't pray in school because they wasn't worried about the fact that they were not praying at home. Amen? Come on, preach. Yeah. Oh, there ain't no Ten Commandments in school. Yeah. Well, I wonder how many people have them hanging in their home. Yeah. Amen? I asked in a church house one night and I was preaching revival. There wasn't very many people that raised their hands. Mm -hmm. What happened? You know, oh, there ain't no prayer in school. How much time do you spend praying with your children? That's right. Oh, they want me to take our Bible to school. How often do you touch your Bible at home? Is it just to pick it up and bring it to church with you or not? Amen? <laughs> this thing goes deeper than what's going on in our schoolhouses. Amen? Come on. It's because we've compromised right. along the lines. Mm -hmm. Come on. Compromises became a way of life. Yeah. That's true. You've heard the saying, what one generation tolerates, the next generation accepts. That's exactly the truth. Right. The longer people compromise, the easier it is for people to accept what the other people compromised for. Right. Amen. Come on. At one time, abortion was an affront to society. It was something that was damnable. People didn't want to hear about that. You know why? Because when mothers miscarried, they cried. Yeah. I've lost my baby. I've lost my baby. Now it means no more to some of them than a piece of tissue. Let's just get it out of there and move on with my life. It'll get in the way of my career. It'll get in the way of my relationship. It'll get in the way of my life. So let's kill it and get rid of it. Right. Compromise. Amen. Amen. That's true. It used to be that, that homosexuality was an affront to our society. Uh -huh. That's why so many times you didn't know anybody was a homosexual until, you know, years later and you thought, what? Then Rock Hudson is a good example for that. Yeah. Amen. I thought, man, there's a ladies' man right there. Watch him in them old movies and stuff. He always had a woman on one arm, a woman on the other. And I thought, man, he's big, he's brawly, he's handsome, he's a ladies' man. Yeah, he's also homosexual. Yeah. But didn't come out with it. Why? Because it was a shame. Right. It was an affront. Uh -huh. Amen. Well, don't want you preaching on sin because that'll make them feel bad. They should feel bad. If we're living in sin, we need to feel bad. Amen. Because uh -huh. if we can live in sin and feel good, Brother Sleep, we're going to feel good right on into hell. Amen. Uh -huh. We need to feel some old fashioned Pentecostal holiness conviction grip our soul and say, hey, that's a sin. Amen. Or we just going to.
going to feel good all the way to hell. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to feel good in hell. Amen? That's true. That's another point we've compromised on. Let's don't preach on hell. We don't want to scare people. Yeah. Amen? That's true. Let's don't scare nobody. I got news for you. If you don't know Jesus, you need to be scared. Come on. If you have not accepted Him as Lord and Savior, you need to be scared. Mm -hmm. You're one heartbeat away from splitting hell wide open. Oh. You're one breath away from splitting hell wide open. Oh. You need Jesus. Amen? Right. And there is no... Com but we've compromised even that. Amen? Oh. The modern day New Age Church, Brother Bill, has even compromised the very gospel that Jesus commissioned us to preach. That's right. We said Tuesday night, whenever Aunt Joyce was here and she testified about John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's the gospel right there. Amen. That's the message right there. If you don't know any other scripture in the Bible, Brother Sleeze, that'll get you to heaven. Because you'll realize Jesus is the only way, the only life. Amen? Yeah. He's the only truth. I can't get to God unless I go through Him. So that's enough to save me. But we've compromised on that point. Yes, sir. Why? Because we didn't want to offend the Muslims. Right. Amen? who regardless of what Rick Ward says, do not serve the same God that we serve. Amen? Come on. I read an article this week, and the title of it was, Rick Warren Builds Bridge to Muslims. Mm. Amen? Oh. Listen to some of the things, and I'm not picking on Rick Warren this morning. This spirit has infiltrated the entirety of the popular church world as we know it today. Amen? Amen? Oh. It's almost got to the place where if you want to hear truth, you're going to have to go find an independent, full gospel, storefront church somewhere in a little town somewhere or out in the boondocks to be able to still hear the Word of God because nowadays when you walk into the big churches, you won't find it there. Amen. Listen to what he said. Talking about bridging the gap. He says, The Reverend Rick Warren, pastor of Saddleback Church in Lake Forest and one of America's most influential <laughs> Christian leaders, has embarked on an effort to heal divisions between evangelical Christians and Muslims by partnering with Southern California mosques and proposing a set of theological principles that includes acknowledging that Christians and Muslims worship the same God. Mm. My Lord. You hear what Brother David just did? Every one of us should have went, mmm. <laughs> That ought to hurt, amen. That, hurt. that ought to mean something to us this morning. That we've got evangelical leaders, amen, standing in the forefront of a movement that says we worship the same God as the Muslims. Oh, no, we don't. Oh, Lord, help us. Amen. Oh, it gets better. Or maybe I should say it gets worse. The men, talking about all of them that gathered there, include the evangelicals, presented a document that co authored outlining points of agreement between. Islam and Christianity. Mm. The document affirms that Christians and Muslims believe in one God and share two central commandments to love God and to love their neighbor. The document also commits both faiths to three goals. Making friends with one another, building peace, mm. and working together on social projects. The document quotes side-by-side -side verses from the Bible and the Quran to illustrate its claims. According to the New Age churches, we know, Brother Bill, this is not the only Word of God, apparently. Amen? They will lay it side by side with the Quran and compare Scriptures and say, look here. Amen? I don't care what the Quran says this morning. Amen? Right. This is the unfallible Amen? Word of the living God. There is no other book on the same level as this Bible right here. Amen? As the Word of God. There is no other book. Not the Book of Mormon. Right. You know, you see those commercials? Yeah. Amen? There's another book. There's another testament. Yeah. The Book of Mormon. Yeah. Amen? Oh, no, 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 no. There is one book. One testament that matters. That's and that's the testimony. That's the testament of Jesus Christ. And the Old Testament Scriptures as well. Amen. That's the only book that matters this morning. But Brother Billy, how are we all going to get along and worship together? We ain't supposed to worship together. 
That's right. If we ain't worshiping the same God. Amen. When Elijah went up on Mount Carmel to face the prophets of Baal, did he say, let's all of us just get together and we're all worshiping the same God anyway. Let's offer one sacrifice. Let's offer one prayer. Let's offer one dedication and devotion toward the Father of light to the all God of heaven or Allah or whoever it is, or Baal as it were, that they were calling him. No, you know what he said? If Baal is God, let's serve him. But if the Lord God, Jehovah, is God, let's serve him. Amen. It's time to get off the fence and realize there is one God and His name is Jesus Christ personified in the flesh brought forth of the womb of the virgin by the name of Mary the only name whereby man can be saved and it's not Allah and it's not Buddha and it's not Muhammad and there's no way to compromise that message unless you put your soul in fear of damnation. Yes sir. That's good preaching. Oh, it's hard. They won't win me no fans, but it's the truth. Amen. Listen to this. We agreed that we would not try to evangelize each other. Mm. You hear that? Mm. We witnessed to each other, but it would be out of love thy neighbor, not focused on conversion. How much do I love you? If I ain't going to tell you the truth, then I'm going to let you split hell wide open. That don't sound like love I ever heard Not of. Much. I don't love you too much. Zero. Amen. Yeah. We've decided to fellowship one with another yeah. and not talk about Jesus. Yeah. Not talk about the fact that you must be born. What, what did Jesus tell Nicodemus when he came to him and said, How am I going to get to heaven? You must be born oh, again. Man. But we ain't going to talk about that. Right. We're going to lock arms with them. And we're going to say, Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Amen. That's exactly what they're doing. Locking arms with false religions. Listen, they ain't done yet. I ain't going to spend all day on this because I got you a few scriptures I want to give you that the Apostle Paul. And of course, Rick Warren has defended the fact, he said, whenever people says what he's doing, he says, oh, no, 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 that's not what we're doing. We still believe in Jesus. We still believe in the Bible as being the Word of God. Well, your actions speak louder than your words, my friend. Amen? Your actions speak louder than your words. If Muslims can come in and sit on your pews and not feel any conviction, I ain't sure you're even saved. If homosexuals can come into your presence and worship with you and fellowship with you and never feel any conviction, I'm not sure you're saved. Amen. 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 I believe whenever we get in the midst of the congregation of those that are born again and believe in the name of Jesus and we ain't right with God, we're going to feel some conviction. Amen. Right. Amen. We're going to feel something. Amen. 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 And if you think... That it ain't my job to tell you those things. You're in the wrong church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You should have stayed home and watched Joel this morning. Amen. Yeah. Because he wouldn't have touched on none of these things. Because yeah. he don't want to offend you. Amen. Come on. And not just him. Come on. A whole slew of others. All right. Do not want to offend anybody. I got news for you. The truth offends. Yes, it's offended me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. It's, I ain't always came into church and amen the preacher and thought, oh, glory to God. Sometimes I went out thinking, my Lord and my God. He stepped on my toes. He didn't stop at my toes. He stepped on my feet all the way up my legs. Amen. Yeah. There's some things in my life that need to be changed, but we can't preach that. Come on. We'll offend people. We'll go to church on Sunday morning and most of our peers will be empty. Yeah, but at least we won't be leading them into hell. Amen? Come on. At least we will not stand before God as He points toward all of the thousands of souls that you have led astray and they're headed to hell and you look down and their blood is crying out against you on your hands because you didn't tell them the truth. Come on, brother. We've compromised. The spirit of compromise has got into our churches. Amen? Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. Ah. Uh, they said, I think that many evangelicals feel that it is a mandate to convert people to Christianity. I don't know what they're calling Christianity there, but if they're talking about that we feel like it's a mandate to tell people about Jesus so that they can be born again, they're right. right. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. 
Amen. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. What is the gospel? That Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, came in the form of man, was born of a virgin by the name of Mary, lived in this life 33 and a half years and showed the works of the Father, climbed Galgotha's hill after standing at the whipping post and taking a crown of thorns in his head and laid his life down on an old rugged cross and laid it down for you because that was the only way you was ever see Jesus. Rick Warren trying to bridge, build a bridge between the Christians and the Muslims. Jesus built a bridge between man and heaven. Amen. And you can't bypass that bridge by taking Rick's. Amen. You must go the way of the cross. And Jesus laid down his life. He gave up the ghost. He gave his life up. But three days he reached down out of the tomb. He came up and picked it up again and walked forth triumphant over death and the grave and led captivity captive and said, now, now, now you can get to heaven. Now you no longer have to be separated from God because I have made the only way, the only bridge from man to God is the cross of Calvary, the finished work that Jesus did there. Amen. That's the gospel. That's right. But when put into a corner, now what about, what about other people who don't believe in Jesus, that don't believe the way you do? Well, I'm not the judge. You're right. But God's Word is. Yes. God's Word is. Amen. And He says you can't get there no other way. Yes, sir. There ain't no compromise in that. I know that sounds dogmatic and narrow-minded to many people today. Come on. But there's no compromising the fact that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Yeah. And if you don't accept Him, you don't go. Come on. But we've compromised that. Come on. We've compromised that. I've got way off of my notes this morning. I want to give you a scripture that the Apostle Paul <coughs> gave. Oh, my, 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 my. Let me find it real quick. <coughs> See, Paul refused to compromise. Yeah. Amen. During his ministry, <laughs> he was committed to Jesus Christ. He was jailed, he was beaten, he was starved, he was stoned, he was ridiculed, he was run out of town. Mm -hmm. And eventually he laid his hand down on Nero's chop block and had it cut off. Yeah. Because he wouldn't compromise. All right. Amen. Listen what he said. Listen what he says about false brethren. Say, Brother Billy, but shouldn't we at least reason with them? And shouldn't we at least give them time to explain their view and their listen to what Paul said about it? He's talking about circumcision and the things of the law at this point, but it can apply to any false doctrine. In Galatians 2 and 4, he says that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. In other words, they had brought in false doctrine. And the enemy was using them to try to bring the church into bondage. Listen to what Paul said. His reaction was to these false brethren. To whom we gave place by subjection? No. Did we listen? Did we sit under their teaching? No. Did we submit ourselves unto their teaching and their false doctrine? No. Listen to what he says. Not for one hour. It reminded me of Nehemiah when he was on the wall and working. And the enemy sent word and said, come down, let us reason together. And Nehemiah said, no. Why should the work cease? Amen. Come on. I don't have time to listen to you explain to me why you believe Buddha's God. I don't have time to allow you to come into my church and explain to me how Muslims and Christians are alike and how the Quran and the Bible reflect one another. There's so many points they agree upon. Yeah. Not for one hour, not for one minute, not for one second, because when you do, it will lead people astray and plant things in their mind that shouldn't be. Oh. And Paul said, no, not for one hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. We did not allow it. Why? Because we did not want the faith, the gospel, to be compromised. Yeah. Paul was so dedicated to the gospel of Jesus Christ, Brother Sleece, he said, if anybody... If an angel from heaven comes and preaches you any other gospel, let it be accursed. Come on. Amen. Amen. Well, it's hard, Brother Bill. Yeah. But it's the truth. Amen. And you can't come. Once you start compromising on the truth, mm. Amen. Right. You'll find yourself coming to church and you cut offs and flip flops, riding your motorcycle and hair longer than my wife and piercings in every ear. Mm. Amen. Come on. 
I know preachers not a stone's throw up the road as far than that just a figure of speech. That at one time stood for something. But today they're so confused they don't know what they stand for. Right. They don't stand for nothing. They still think they're all right. Mm. They go from house to house getting other people to think they're all right. Mm. Amen. I've never seen so much confusion in my life. Right. Why? Because they gave the enemy enough time to convince them of something that wasn't true. Don't listen to him. That's what Paul was saying. That's right. Don't allow these false doctrines to come in mm -hmm. because they'll cause you to compromise yeah. the gospel. Paul had a burning desire right. to preach the gospel. Amen. It was a commitment, Brother Sleece. He never compromised his position. As a matter of fact, he would tell Timothy in 1 Timothy 1 and 11, According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust. Amen. All right. You hear people all the time say, well, you know, I was called to preach years ago, but I never did do it. It meant something to Paul. Yeah. It was as if God took the gospel, and this, is, this ain't how it happened. This is just for our benefit. And said, here, I'm trusting you with this. I'm trusting you with this message. Take it, Paul. My goodness. I know he was a little reluctant at first, but there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. It's, now, you hold on to it. I'm trusting you with it. Mm -hmm. I'm trusting you with it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Stand up here, Brother Donna. <clears throat> hold on to that with all you got. Hold it next to you. Don't let it go. Turn around here. And there would be times in Paul's walk with God mm -hmm. that people would try and pull that away. Yeah. That things and circumstances would try to pull that away. Right. That brothers would say, Paul, if you just compromise a little bit on your stand on the law, if you compromise a little bit on your stand with Jesus, if you just give us an inch, if you just let us have a little bit. But Paul said he committed it to my trust, and I will not compromise. Amen. We need some preachers today that will get a hold of the Word of God, the truth, and say, I ain't going to compromise. God trusted me with His Word. He trusted me with the Gospel, and I ain't going to let go of it. I'm not going to compromise. It means something to me. The Word of God still means something to me today. Amen. It's not just a book. Hallelujah. It's not just written on these pages. It's written on the table of my heart this morning. It means something to me. I refuse refuse to compromise on that. That's right, brother. Amen. I might come in on Sunday and be the only one here. Yeah. But that's all right. I will not compromise on what the Word of God says. I will not compromise to fill my pews. I will not compromise to make you feel better. I will not compromise to get your money. Amen. I will stand on the Word of God. And you see, it's not just this little church. I know most people don't understand this. You think you're coming in on Sunday morning and I preach a little message and you're gone and that's it. God has given us a worldwide platform through radio, through video, through internet, through CD, through cassettes, yeah. through the newsletter. And it is a charge this morning, Brother Beal, that should not, that will not be shunned. All right. Amen. With the last breath that is within me, by the grace of God, I will preach His Word uncompromised. Right. It will cost me friends. It will cost me church members. It will cost me tithes. It will cost me offerings. Right. But God has committed unto my trust His Word, right. His Gospel. And I will not, I cannot, I refuse to compromise on the fact that Jesus Christ is the only way to get to heaven. If you're a Muslim and trusting in Allah, you will split hell wide open. If you're a Catholic and you're trusting in Mary, you will split hell wide open. If you're holiness and you're dependent upon the length of your hair and the length of your sleeves, you will split hell wide open. There is only one place to put your trust today and that's Jesus Christ and His blood. Works cannot get you there. Religion cannot get you there. Only a personal relationship with Jesus Christ can get you there. That's it, I started preaching that when I was 19 and I'll be preaching that till I'm dead. Amen. Paul said he's committed it to my trust. 
He's given us a charge today, church. Yeah. And the church is compromised. Mm -hmm. The church is compromised. Yeah. We can talk about how California votes that it's okay for homosexuals to get married. Yeah. Yeah. And that's sad. Amen. But it's understandable because it's the world. Right. And it's a perverse generation. Come on. But then you talk about re religious denominations yeah. that have decided, well, you know, it's alright to ordain homosexuals. My goodness. Mm. We got homosexuals on church boards. We've got homosexuals pastors behind pulpits. Mm. And the denominations have winked at it. Mm. They've winked at it. They've given the devil and he's taken them. They've, they've given the devil an inch and he's taken them all, Sister Nancy. Right. Amen. Come on. No longer do we preach on saving yourself from marriage. That's why we got teenagers sitting on our pews and shouting our eyes on Sunday morning. Months pregnant, not married. Right. Pregnant out of wedlock because there's no standards anymore in the house of God. It's all right for you to do whatever you want to do, dress any way you want to dress, listen to anything you want to listen to. No, it ain't all right either. It might be all right with man, but it ain't all right with God. Amen? Amen. We've compromised. Yes, sir. And now we got teenagers that don't know what to do. Right. Because they're pregnant. Come on. And they've got, they're facing that. And it's scary. Mm -hmm. It's scary. Yes, sir. But where was mom and daddy? Yeah. Too busy. Too busy or just didn't care. Mm -hmm. Or maybe too busy messing around theirself to care what their kids were doing. Amen. Right. My goodness, I about lost all my amens. I gotta quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paul said it's been committed to my trust. It's been given to me. Mm. When he gave his charge to Timothy, right before he went to Nero's chop block, one of the things he said was to watch in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof. Of yeah. your ministry. Amen. I believe Paul was telling Timothy, don't compromise. All right. Amen. Hold fast to that which has been given to you. Mm -hmm. Watch in all things. Mm -hmm. See, Joshua was unwilling to compromise when he stood and said, Hey, I don't know what you're going to do, but as for me and my house, yes, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes, amen. amen. Right. We need some Joshua's. Amen. Daniel was unwilling to compromise mm -hmm. when they said, You know, if you'll bow down to the king, if you quit praying like we saw you doing. Yeah. And you know what? Daniel might have thought, at the very least, Daniel could have thought, well, you know, this time I'll close the windows. Uh -huh. They won't see me. Yeah. I'll just pray in secret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, the Bible says he went to his house, he went to his chamber, however it works, and it says, as he had done before, mm -hmm. he opened the windows toward Jerusalem mm -hmm. and he got down and prayed. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, Daniel was unwilling to compromise. <laughs> right. Amen. <clears throat> Who else? Three Hebrew children. Said God is able. He will. But if He don't, yes. I still won't compromise. Come on. Yes. We will not bow down to your image. We will not worship that which you have set up. All right. Amen. Amen. We need some Hebrew boys. We need some Shadrach, Meshach, and David was unwilling to compromise at the battlefield when he went down to give his brothers some food. Right. He said, what are y'all doing? You're hiding from the enemy. Yeah. And they said, won't you just shut up? You just came down here to make a show and you're blowing off. And he turned to one of them and said, is there not a cause? Yeah. And then he turned and went on about his business. There's a cause today mm -hmm. that is worth not compromising. Amen. David was unwilling to compromise. Amen. Mm -hmm. There is still a cause. Nehemiah, when he, his answer to Sanballat was, I will not cease. The, why should the work cease? I will not come down and visit with you and reason with you. There's nothing to reason. Yeah. Let's talk about this Jesus only. Well, there ain't no nothing to talk about. Yeah. Jesus is the only way. Yeah, Amen. Right. What, how in the world do you, can you not understand that? Is that not simple enough for you? Maybe you need a version that puts it in easier language than I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It don't get no simpler than that. Amen. There's no room to compromise. That's right. God's looking for some people that can't be bargained with. Come on. Uh, mm -hmm. You hear what I said? Yeah. Preachers have sold the gospel. Right. I'm talking about people that used to preach it. Right. Hell was hot. Heaven was real. Yeah. Jesus was the only way. Mm -hmm. And now it's all about you can be rich. Yeah. You just start talking to your finances. <laughs> yeah. Give me a thousand dollars and see if God don't multiply that. Yeah. 
Y'all hear about Jesus. All you hear about is their prosperity. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they've compromised. Right. <clears throat> There's an old song they used to sing. Satan came to me this morning. Spoke to me without a warning. He said, why don't you quit or compromise? Mm. I said, you listen devil. With you I'm going to level. I won't quit. My eyes are on the prize. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a man in the Bible that compromised more than one, but one that gets my attention more than others, and that's King Saul. I'm closing with this. I don't know how long I've been preaching. Not long enough, but... King Saul was commanded to take the Amalekites and destroy everything that they had. Yeah. Enemies of God. And the Bible tells us, and you can find this in 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter. The Bible tells us that Saul went and he destroyed everything except... The best of the cattle yeah. and King Agag. He spared him. Yes. God comes to the prophet Samuel and he says, It grieves me that I've set Saul in the position he's in. Go take it away from him. So you won't always keep your position. Mm -hmm. Right. God will yank the carpet out money to you. Come on. Say it. Amen. Come on. That's the truth. So Samuel goes to Saul. He says, Saul, have you done what the Lord said? Oh, yes, I've done all the Lord commanded. Now he hadn't been compromised. Yeah. And Samuel says, well, if you've done everything that God commands, then what's that I hear? Mm. He could hear the sheep. He could hear the cattle, whatever it was there. Mm. What's that I hear? And old Saul, he starts saying, well, you know, the people. The people convinced me not to do everything that the Lord... See, you ain't going to be able to stand before God one day and say, well, Lord, I wouldn't have had no congregation had I not compromised. Mm. The people, they wouldn't accept that message. Yeah. They didn't accept His message. But He didn't change it. Mm. Amen. Right. <clears throat> Listen. Verse 19. <laughs> Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, mm. but didst fly upon the spoil and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? Yeah. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord has sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. See, God didn't tell him to bring Agag, the king. Told him to kill him, destroy him. But the people took the spoil, the sheep, the oxen, the chief of the things. In other words, the people, it's their fault. Boy, man, man can't get off that, can they? It's always somebody else's fault. I'd be church if it wasn't for Brother Sleeves. I'd come to church for one Brother David. I'd come to church, but Brother Bill was preaching. <clears throat> Amen. Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, it is better than it is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. Amen. Yeah. Now listen to this. For rebellion, verse 23, is as the sin of witchcraft. Now, I'm going to give you something this morning you probably hadn't heard before, but I'm going to use the word compromise in there because when you compromise, it is rebellion. Yes, it is. Right. When we compromise the gospel, it is rebellion against the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? All right. When we compromise the things that God has said, it is rebellion against the Word of God. Mm -hmm. okay. So the spirit of compromise and the spirit of witchcraft walk hand in hand. Mm -hmm. See, witchcraft is taking over the church today. The spirit of rebellion. The spirit of compromise. Listen what happens. And Saul said unto Samuel, oh, back up, verse 23, for rebellion is a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people. Didn't want to offend nobody. Right. And obeyed their voice. Then he cries out for mercy. And as Samuel turns to go away, Saul lays hold on the hem of his garment and it rips. Mm -hmm. And Samuel turns to Saul and says, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day and hath given it to a neighbor. Talking about David. A neighbor of thine that is better than thou. So we find Saul begins to compromise that which God has told him to do. And you go ahead and study the life of Saul, you'll find out that he gets so bad off that he goes to the witch of Endor for advice. Mm -hmm. He'd already given a commandment himself and it had been passed down from his authority that if anybody practiced those things, they're going to be put to death. Mm -hmm. 
Yet when he could get no answer from God himself because of his sin and his rebellion, he said, I know what I'll do. I'll go ask the witch. Mm. So you see what compromise does to you? Amen. And the life of this man that started with compromising, see, he thought it was just a little thing. You could tell by the way he was talking to Samuel. Well, I, I killed all of these things. I destroyed all of these. This here's all I kept. Mm. I only compromised. I only gave the enemy just an inch. The life of Saul can be summed up in one statement that came from his own lips. In 1 Samuel 26 and 21, the last part of that verse, Saul says these words, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. The church has played the fool and have erred exceedingly. They have played the game of compromise till they've lost out with God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says <clears throat> in Matthew 12 and 30, He that is not with me is against me. All right. Jesus spoke those words. He that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. In closing this morning, how many times have I closed, Brother Bill? <laughs> At the outbreak of the Civil War, a certain individual could not decide which side he wanted to support, the North or the South. He was kind of in between. He's riding the fence. He had friends on both sides. So he decided to be neutral. He wore a gray jacket and blue trousers. Thereby, he was dressing for both the Confederacy and the Union. Yeah. And one day there was a big fight on the battlefield and he was caught in the middle of the skirmish. And he decided, listen, I ain't for, I ain't for either side, so I'm going to stand up and let them know that. Mm -hmm. So he stood up and shouted that he was neutral. That he should be allowed to walk away. However, the Union sharpshooters, shooters, the sharpshooters of the Union Army, they saw his gray jacket and they began to shoot. The Confederate marksmen, they saw his blue pants and they began to shoot. They didn't know which side he was on. So he died from compromise. Amen? You can't straddle this fence. That's right. You're either for him or you're against him. Can't be lukewarm. You can't be lukewarm. There's no ground in the middle. Right. You're going to get shot by friendly fire. Right. Amen. Come on. You're fixing to die Amen. spiritually. Right. Because you, when you're with the devil's crowd, yeah. you act like the devil. Yeah. When you're in church on Sunday morning, it's whoop da ma 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 ma. Devil can speak in tongues. You ain't proving nothing. Mm -hmm. You prove more by the life you live than a thousand words spoken in tongues. Yeah. Amen. Oh, that's true. I'm spirit filled. Well, it ought to be showing. Yeah, put some wings on that. Amen. Put some wings on it. <laughs> Take it outside the doors yeah. and live the life before people. Right. Don't compromise. Come people on. compromise at work. They don't want nobody knowing they go to church. They especially don't want them knowing they go down here. Hmm. Amen. Yeah. So I'll laugh at their jokes. I got even, I got one or two dirty ones myself. I'll share with them. Hmm. You're fixing to die. Right. You like he warned the church over there in Revelations. Hmm. You're fixing to miss out. Compromise a key. God's looking for commitment, not compromise. Yeah. Amen. Somebody else this morning have something before we go.